there appears to be a distinct difference between nations leading the way and those lagging in the development of artificial intelligence, according to a report on cloud complexity that the intelligent data infrastructure company, NetApp just released. The research offers global insights on the adoption of AI, including its progress, preparedness, obstacles, and momentum. It also emphasizes the importance of a single data infrastructure for the success of AI. As per the NetApp report, countries like Singapore, India, the United States, and the United Kingdom are spearheading the use and innovation of artificial intelligence. On the other hand, nations such as Germany, Australia, and Spain are seen to be behind in terms of technical innovation. The report, conducted in collaboration with Savanta, surveyed over 1,300 executives across 10 countries to gauge AI implementation status in various industries. The report also suggests that both AI leaders and AI laggards show a difference in their approach to AI. Globally, 67% of companies in AI leading countries report having hybrid IT environments, India leading with 70% and Japan lagging at 24%. The report says that IT cost and data security are major challenges for AI adoption and innovations, but it won't stop the progress of AI. The report concludes that the disparity underscores the growing importance of AI in driving economic growth, innovation, and competitiveness on a global scale. The Indian Air Force is creating a drone system with artificial intelligence to test aircraft engines, which will take the place of the current manual procedures. For the purpose of detecting, identifying, and classifying flaws such as cracks, corrosion, dents, deformation, and damage on external and, to some extent, internal components, the system would comprise high-resolution cameras installed on a tiny or micro-drone, imaging software, and machine learning algorithms. IAF officers claim that the current aero engine inspection processes are labor-intensive, time-consuming, and error-prone. Under the direction of the maintenance command, a new system is being designed with the goal of addressing the shortcomings of the current approaches. Both fixed-wing and helicopter aircraft will employ the drone. The drone can inspect a variety of parts, including propellers, rotors, engine hubs, air intake ducts, exhaust nozzles, and turbine blades. A vital component of aircraft dependability and flight safety is aero engine inspection. In addition to standard engine inspections conducted before and after flights, the IAF maintains a systematic schedule for conducting inspections and overhauls based on frequency, flight duration, or malfunction complaints. High-resolution photos taken by the drone's movable cameras will be sent in real-time over a wireless link to engineers and technicians for automatic processing, analysis, and documentation. Since INS Utkrash was upgraded recently, India's strategic defenses in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands ANI, have seen a major improvement. This naval air station has been outfitted with state-of-the-art landing systems. It is an essential component of Veer Savrakar International Airport VSI Airport. INS Utkrash now has a new advanced landing guidance system AFLS, Precision Approach Path Indicator POPI, and CAT-2 Approach Lighting System installed thanks to the joint efforts of the Indian Navy and the Airports Authority of India AAI. These developments turn Port Blair Airport into a precision instrument runway in conjunction with the AAI's already-in-use instrument landing system ILS. The improved infrastructure enables airplanes to safely land at night and in low visibility situations. As a result, VSI Airport becomes an authentic all-weather airfield that can function continuously all year round. According to the officials, the sixth barge of the LSAM-16 Yard 130A series, which was constructed by a private company, was launched on Monday in Thane, Maharashtra. According to the officials, the barge will assist the Navy in making it easier to deliver supplies and ammunition to ships. The launching ceremony was presided over by Madhusudan by INIS, GMNAD. On March 5, 2021, the Ministry of Defense and Surya Dipta Project's private LTD, Thane, inked a contract to produce 11 XACTCM barges. According to the government, these barges' availability will boost the Indian Navy's operational responsibilities by making it easier for its ships to dock and disembark supplies or ammunition at outer harbors and alongside jetties. These barges are indigenously designed and built under relevant naval rules and regulation of Indian Register of Shipping. The moon's far side, sometimes referred to as its hidden or far side, is permanently faced away from Earth and presents communication difficulties. China's Chang'e 6 rocket will travel there. China is getting ready to send a robotic mission called Chang'e 6 to explore the lunar surface in a round trip. The mission's ambitious goal is to gather samples from the moon's far side. 
with the goal of establishing the framework for the development of a lunar base at the Moon's South Pole by 2030, this mission is the first in a planned series of lunar explorations. Set for launch this week, Chang'e 6 will use a backup spacecraft from the successful 2020 Chang'e 5 mission, which made history by bringing back lunar samples to Earth after over four decades. The tension persisted in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir on Monday as residents expressed their dissatisfaction with the local government and administration, claiming a dearth of basic services. The lack of vital infrastructure, such tunnels to prevent accidents and landslides, worried the locals greatly. The Jamaat Islami legal team staged a demonstration in front of the Central Press Club of Muzaffarabad. They discussed the frequent landslide accidents on Lohar Street and the urgent necessity for a tunnel to mitigate these safety risks. In addition, locals bemoaned the lack of progress in extending highways that link Pakistan-Pakistan, highlighting larger infrastructure issues that impede the growth and security of the area. Residents of Muzaffarabad and neighboring areas accused rampant corruption within the administration of obstructing the construction of necessary tunnels. During the press club protest, speakers warned they will escalate their actions if their demands continue to be ignored. The second bailout package has come to an end after the International Monetary Fund's IMF executive board approved a 1.1 billion US dollars loan tranche for Pakistan, according to ARY News. With the current arrangement about to expire this month, Pakistan needs to avoid a sovereign default. This cash represents the third and last installment of a 3 billion US dollars standby arrangement with the IMF. Last month, Pakistan and the IMF reached a staff level agreement on the final review of the 3 billion US dollars bailout package. The country has already received two tranches totaling 1.9 billion US dollars, with 1.2 billion US dollars dispersed in July and an additional 700 million US dollars in January 2024. Pakistan is considering applying for a new, longer-term IMF loan that will be larger in amount. As early as July, Islamabad might be able to get a staff-level consensus on the new program, according to Finance Minister Mohammad Aurangzeb. The goal is to get a loan that will last for at least three years in order to strengthen macroeconomic stability and carry out urgently required structural reforms. Still unknown, though, is the program's precise scope. Key advancements have been made in the ongoing rehabilitation of Bogdogra Air Base, an Indian Air Force IAF, installation located in the strategically key Siliguri corridor that borders China, according to high-resolution satellite images. This improvement coincides with increased tensions in the region, underscoring the importance of Bogdogra's development. The Doklam standoff in 2017 highlighted Bogdogra's crucial function. Due to its close proximity to the disputed territory, it serves as both a major staging area for troop deployment and an air launch pad. The airbase's capacity and capabilities are intended to be greatly increased by the ongoing improvements. The imagery provides details that point to a multifaceted rehabilitation strategy, such as the extended runway, whose lengthening will enable the operation of heavier aircraft, possibly including heavy transport planes and fighter units carrying larger payloads. This means that during emergencies, troops and equipment may be deployed more quickly. Improved facilities The construction of additional structures and support facilities points to the potential improvement of maintenance bays, crew quarters, and ammunition storage, among other logistical capacities. Modernization is another. Enhancing current infrastructure can entail adding more advanced radar technology for improved situational awareness, as well as making changes to communication networks and air traffic control systems. This initiative is probably seen as an attempt to show off India's will to protect its territorial integrity. India's potential to project air power in the event of future wars and its strategic location in the area are both strengthened by the upgraded airbase. That is all from YKS team for now. Thanks for watching and keep supporting.